Welcome to the Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy, the free podcast for motivated teachers and school leaders who want to inspire their students and school community in literacy learning. Make sure you subscribe to the show on your favourite podcast player, and for more amazing literacy resources, check out the show notes provided with every episode. Hi, I'm Sharon, and I'm the host of a Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy. In every Toolkit episode, we bring you specific resources, tools, strategies, tips, techniques to help you in your job as a teacher of literacy. Firstly, we acknowledge and pay our respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country, and we respect and value their past, present, and ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. Welcome everyone to the podcast, and uh, we'd love to give you specific resources, tools, strategies, tips, techniques to help you in your job as a teacher and making your own professional choices and using the fullness of the Australian curriculum. Great teaching can never be packaged into a program, I say. What do you think, Sharon? Well, that was one big, long sentence. (laughs) (laughs) No pauses there. No. (laughs) Um, And welcome newcomers to our uh, Teacher's Toolkit Facebook group, which is um, going ahead and really going full steam ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Sharon, we've just had a lovely weekend down in uh, Middleton. We uh, have. Which Very is nice. a nice yes. beach area south of Adelaide, about an hour and a half, half away. away. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So lovely to just have a little bit of a mm. some downtime, some switch-off time, some nice company, yep. some great strolls. Lots of surf down there. We didn't go oh, swimming. We but didn't go no, swimming. No, but we had a lot. <laughs> Sounded lot. like we surfed, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of relaxing, which is good, you know. Yes. Gives us so, recharge the batteries. Recharge, Yes. And it's also where um, Matthew Flinders uh, in 1802 met Nicholas Bourdin, who was the French investigator down there, and they met at Encounter Bay down there. Um, French explorer. uh, French explorer, sorry. And um, they met. Flinders' ship was called the investigator. That's true. That's where it comes from. And if the French had won the war back in Europe, um, it's likely a lot of those names along the coast would have stayed French. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are quite a few that are still French, French names. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, speaking of encounters, we are about to encounter one of the most amazing educators in Australia, Di Snowball. Thank you, Di, for being with us. It's a pleasure. You're both doing such a fabulous job. Oh. And anything I can do to help teachers in the way that you're doing, I'm very happy to do so, oh, thank you, Di. And so your story, you, you started off uh, teaching uh, many years ago and you've um, done a, a yeah, whole range of things. Yeah, I don't ra- really need to tell things. you how many years ago. <laughs> no, Although, no. I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> yes, this is my be. 54th year of teaching. Yes. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. And, yeah. yes. and you're I such... started as a secondary maths teacher, actually. Oh. But I loved children's literature, did a library course and ended up um, in a primary school. And at that stage, as the infant mistress, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> um, had to know time? a lot about how to teach reading. So I thought, my golly, if I'm going to help other teachers as their leader, I'd better find out everything I can. Yes. And yeah. I actually think that's the most important thing for us to always do as teachers. Yeah. Find out everything you can. Don't believe anything that any one of us says <laughs> unless you have done enough you know, reading yourself from a variety of people to really make up your own mind. And then try you know, it in your classroom and see, yeah, it, see exactly. it work. It yes. has to work and be better for the kids. Look, let's face it, that's what we're all there for. Yeah. Um, that's it, isn't it's it? It's heartbreaking yeah. when there's a child who is struggling at school and anything we can do to help them, mm. which, and, as you, you said in, in your introduction, yeah. no program no. can help them. No. It's no. not a Teaching's not a program. No. And the ultimate is to see the changes happening in their real reading and their real writing to see Absolutely. coming through yeah. there. And if you can see that happening there, you're you're pretty well on the right track. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. are. And, you know, with things like enjoyment as well, it's funny, we just had um, one of our goddaughters and the husband come for the weekend with their three kids. And the seven-year-old who's just gone into grade two, he'll be eight soon. He had it was carrying this bag, and I thought it had all his clothes in it. And I took him into his room and said, "So, do you want to unpack your stuff?" And when he opened it up, do you know what it was full of? 
Books. Books. Oh, oh. fabulous. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They were coming for two days yes. and he had a whole bag of books. Oh. The funniest thing was he said that was in case there weren't any at my place. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. Um, you know, I probably got more children's books than a library. Yes, I was going and, to say it's coming um, to the home of books. I wanted to make sure. Oh. And, you know, and I also, uh, we decided what he'd give him while he was here was and, and and all of them from the three year old as well, mm. we gave them a notebook each and some yes. really good pens to oh. write with because oh, the shocking pencils they try to write with are so bad for their handwriting, which means they don't even get a good visual image of a word, mm. even if they copied it from somewhere. It actually affects their spelling even. Mm. But, um, you know, they just loved the whole weekend. They entertained themselves by reading and writing. Mm. And they what they got in the car with to go home, you know. Yeah. So what joy. That's what we're all on about, yes. isn't yeah. it? Yes. And you've been helping teachers for a number of years after you were teaching and, and, and uh, you had a huge project in New York and then back in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, Yep. Uh, with consultants working in these uh, in literacy and numeracy. Um, yes. And uh, lots yep. of big changes happened, um, Di, didn't they? Yep. Oh, yeah. I yep. mean, you know, you worked in New York as part of the project, both of you, and we know that New York became uh, the sort of – was the city most uh, admired mm. by all around the country because of the good teaching that was going on. Uh, because Australians were there uh, working with them, training them, getting into classrooms and showing them what to do and supporting them in having a go. How many, how many, um, how many Australians were there? Uh, 350 at one stage. And, that, um, and they all, all yeah. came over from different states of Australia to come and work? Yeah, in, that's in, right. Yeah. There were a swag of you from South mm. Australia. But, you know, people from the country and the city and everywhere, primary and secondary. And, and why was that? We had something going for us to... Be yeah, up to because come over. Australian teachers um, and New Zealanders, we had some mm. great New Zealanders as well, were really renowned throughout the world for the great teaching and literacy they were doing. And, you know, that was, was not with programs. It was we were mm. – one of the things that the teachers used to say to us, how come you already know our children so well? And we were really trained to be very good observers of children. If we wanted yes. to find out about their reading, mm. we would actually listen to them read and find yeah. out what they were doing, support what they were doing well, and help them to do what they needed help with. Yep. Yes. And you know, to then to help teachers to know how to do that in the best possible way, not mm. just one, one size fits all. Mm. It just doesn't make sense. So it's the same... And, and then when we came, you know, a lot of us came back to Melbourne and western region of of, uh, of Melbourne was a huge region with a lot of what would be called disadvantaged kids, although I don't know that everybody's disadvantaged because of where they come from or what language mm-hmm. they speak or whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we actually, uh, you know, a number of us were working in that region, helping teachers in the same way, no programs. And, and, uh, and it feel- became the most improved area of Australia, even though it was, you know, um, poverty, second languages, you name it. Um, lots of very young new teachers, but and it's it's very easy to to get improvement in a school, but to get change in a whole system. So we're talking about 180 or more primary and secondary schools, in and it was written mm. up. Uh, by as an OECD paper because of its success. And do you know how I started that? I met with all the principals and said, I'm absolutely shocked that your classrooms no longer have classroom libraries. Yeah. Why? And I want you to go back to your schools and make sure that the children all have access to lots of great books that they can read and enjoy. Yeah. And, you know... Um, and just by starting that, it means that then if you want to find out about children's reading, then mm. you can actually just immediately find out by listening to them read. Yes. You know, yep. And it's the same with writing. So if we're talking about spelling today, then, uh, you know, if anyone asks me about a children's spelling, I say, show me their writing. Because if I look at their writing, I can analyse it and see what spelling strategies are they using, 
and what aren't they using that we can help them to improve. And so if, if the kids aren't writing, then I can't do that. Like yep. if the kids aren't doing a lot of reading, well, I can't listen to them read and find out about what they're doing well already. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's very fundamental stuff, isn't it? And you to find out. And you found you found so much out about this that you wrote a book um, called Teaching Spelling, K to Eight. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. That was the third one that Faye Bolton and I wrote about right. spelling. Yep. Our first one was in 1983. And again, even when we were asked to write that, we made sure we read every piece of research yes. that had ever been done because you can't only say, well, this is what I think and this is what works for me. Mm. Mm. It'll, you need to make sure you really know what you're talking about. If you're going to write a book for teachers to use, it, it, it's a very serious matter. Yes. So, you know, we, we have always done that. You know, and I've, I just continue to learn because I work with teachers and kids all the time. Yes. Yeah. So that's what, what good teaching is about, isn't it? Mm. Yes, yes. And I like that, you know, you've brought that to us, Di, you know, that's the research that you do about that, you know, find reading widely, listening to um, others widely yep. and then thinking about what does – and then how does that apply in the classroom? What does that look like? What? Mm. So today we're sort of really keen to um, explore. In fact, what have you called this podcast, Phil? Well, what I, uh, what we were chatting the other day about um, that there's a struggle that teachers have where we, um, they, they're working with spelling, but they're not seeing a transfer into their writing. So we thought we'd call it teaching spelling for, for writing. Yes. Um, and and that is the struggle that we I hear that question frequently yep. from teachers. You know, and we're spending we spend all this time working with spelling, and then we're not seeing that play out yep. in students' writing. So that's what we'd really like to explore with you today. Sure. Di, this well, you know, it is such a sensible um, name even for the for the podcast because the only reason we need to spell in a conventional way is so that other people can read our writing. Mm. Otherwise, mm. we could all make up our own way to write whatever words we like. Which they did about 400 uh, years ago. They just Everyone <laughs> made up their own <laughs> spellings. And... Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so people realise the need for a conventional way to do it in any language. Mm. And uh, so, of course, that means children need a lot of examples, again, getting back to what they read, um, of what conventional writing mm. and you know spelling within that looks like, and so learning to to write and the spelling part of that and learning to read go hand in hand. You know, if we give them books with limited vocabulary, mm. then their vocabulary is limited by that. But also words that they've seen um, and needed to work out how to read. It's very limited as well. So we have to make sure that it's as rich as possible. But they've got to real. You know, if I, so my favourite question to kids about this is, why do you think we need to, you know, become better spellers? And if they say to pass the test, yes. then I know what's going on in the classroom. Yeah. And if they say, so other people can read our writing, then uh -huh. I also know what's going on in the classroom. Yes. yes. And it's that, uh, so other people can read our writing that gives it its purpose. Yeah. So if you've got an authentic purpose for learning how to spell better and conventionally, then you're, you're going to do a better job. But if no one, and it's interesting, kids can actually write a lot in some classrooms, but who gets to read it? Yes. And they need, you know, I really think that the end of a writing session should be time when kids swap their writing with each other and read each other's writing, whatever mm. they've been writing about. Mm. Yes. If I can't read your writing because perhaps you misspelled or the write, handwriting's terribly, then I can say to you, what what do you intend this to be? Mm. And that's, mm. um, you know, a genuine question. It's not a criticism. It's just, oh, I can't work out what this is and I'm really interested in reading your writing. And then the, the, the student knows, oh, there's a reason for me to learn how to spell uh, because I'm going to use it in my writing yep. and also to sort of figure out the best ways of doing it to proofread 
if they if someone's got a read you're writing, there's a reason to proofread. Yes. And yep. so all of those things are what makes the difference. Now then if if it's going to, if what you're doing is not transferring to the kids' writing, you have to ask yourself, what are you doing? Do the mm. kids mm. first of all really know why they're bothering to learn how to spell? But also, is it happening by me saying to the kids, Oh, I've noticed in your writing that many of you are not sure about how you add uh, suffixes like ed and ing to words. You know, you've got a pretty good idea about how to spell some basic words, but then I can see in your writing you're not sure about how to add these. Mm -hmm. So let's study that together and figure out how to do it because then you'll be able to do that in your own writing. So the fact that I'm saying I've noticed in your writing Mm -hmm. and let's learn it because you'll be able to use it in your writing immediately ties it into the purpose and and it transfers. But if I said... Well, now let's go off and do, uh, you know, some workbook exercises on it and, and presume that's going to transfer to their writing. It it doesn't. It has to be the kids figuring it out, of course, with you leading the way. And you do need to have a plan as a teacher. Where are my kids at? And therefore, what are we going to do next? Yes. And even as a whole school, what plan do we have to make sure that kids don't miss out? That's really what s- systematic Yes. teaching and learning is about, isn't it? Having a good plan. A yeah. plan, that's and, right. And knowing how to do it well yep. so yes. that it will transfer. Yes. Yep. And the other other point I want to make while we're on this is that I need to model to kids how I would use what we're learning in reading or writing. So if we're doing some class writing together and we want to write a particular word and I have to say, well, is there anything we've learned that would help us to do that? Is there another word we know that will help us with that? Have we got anything in our classroom that we, we've been learning about that we could use to do that? Mm. So, oh, we already know how to write day and we're trying to write, you know, the chickens will lay some eggs. So have we got anything that will help us? Mm. You know, that's the only reason for, for word walls, for example, that we yes. develop those. This is what words and we're learning because then we'll have them as a, a good reference. Yes. And the headings of the word wall should be words I know how to read and write. Mm. You know, yeah. not just it's there just, and yeah. no one really makes use of it. So all of that, that modelling that we're doing um, – you know, same in reading, we'll come to an unknown word. Well, how will we work it out? You need to model how to do that, don't you, mm-hmm. in order for it. And then I will even say to the kids, that's what you can do in your writing. Yes. And it's interesting, just because we model something doesn't mean all the kids realise that's something they could do too. Mm-hmm. So I always mm-hmm. make a point of saying that if we've used this strategy, that's something you can do. And I also know which particular kids to enforce that with, don't I? Yes. Because I know yep. my kids, yes. not yep. because it says to do this next in a no. program. No, no. Or, or, you, yeah, or you have the koalas, the kookaburras and the wombats. And, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know how people could possibly do that with – I mean, I certainly notice, like, if I, if I just walk around the class and I write down the words that I see kids – misspelling, you know, and I write write them down beside each child's name. And then I look over that and I see, oh, five of them are writing a lot as one word. Yes. Well, I'm going to pull those five kids together, aren't I, Mm -hmm. and actually explain what that means, like a group, a bunch or whatever. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can't just write it as one word. And, oh, but that was so quick. Yes. Uh, but, you know, if the other that, thing is I know if they're in the habit of writing that, you know, coming off their pen as one word, they'll also need to go off and practice with a mm. raisable white word or something, yes. writing it almost in their sleep as two words because yes. they've got to break a pattern. Yes. So I know how to help those kids do that. Or I notice there's a common thing across the class, so then we'll, we'll all get engaged in that. You know, uh, so that, out that's your that's your explicit teaching, isn't it? Where you really absolutely hon- really honing on who needs what. Um, yep, yes. and it has to be manageable for me. I can't teach them all as individuals, but you know, I've never noticed that 
the whole class were, were all different in spelling mm. anyway. Mm. I noticed that there's some general, and even though some kids might write and you look at their writing and you can't see any spelling mistakes, I actually don't know are they having a go. What would they happen if they had a go at other words that they don't know yet? What what mm. strategies would they use? You know, so I might try them out on some different things. But but I also do know some kids like me, I learn to spell easily because I have a very good visual memory. Yes. You know, if I've yes. seen a word, mm. I'll remember what it looks like. Mm. It's like you take a photograph of it. And so some kids are doing that, but they may not really understand why something is spelled S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G and not S-U-M mm. uh, because they don't, they don't really know, well, that's two parts. You know, it's a compound word to do with the meaning of some and the meaning of thing coming together. Mm. So if I notice that's a common type of mistake, we can have a discussion about how words work. English language is like that. And so I can help, we can have a discussion across the whole class, even though it might have looked like only a couple of kids were making that type of spelling mistake. Oh, yes, good idea. Right? Yep, yep. So, um, you know, and the kids knowing things that can help other kids, so why wouldn't I have a whole class discussion about something? Yep. Um, and so I, it's not, I don't believe I could manage teaching each child individually no. But I haven't ever found the need to. I've found some small group needs. I have found some individual needs. And so I can hone in on that child. But a lot of the work I find is really helpful for us to study as a class. It's very, very developmental. Um, so, I mean, what I just spoke about with the with the suffixes, I find that in every grade three, four classroom I walk in, work in across mm. the world, you know? Mm, yep. So I know I should actually even plan to do some teaching around that because that's about when they're, they're ready to understand it. It doesn't mean I wouldn't do it in grade two or grade six, but, you know, that's what having some sort of plan across the school can be about. But then you've got, got to look at what the kids are doing in their writing if they all know how to do that, why will I waste time on it? Yes. You know, yeah. so, but if there's a general need, then it's it's really a good thing for us to study that as a class and they all share what they know and discover and we come up with a lot of really good information together. But we're always talking about how could you use that in your writing yes. and your reading. Yeah. Yeah, yep. They always go together, don't they? Always, yes. yes. So, yes. So, I'm sorry, you asked me a question and then I'd, I'd answer it <laughs> for 10 minutes. So you no, <laughs> that's fine because what, what we were going to uh, just go through – you know, some of the top tips for um, you know transferring spelling into writing and um, and I suppose yep. that piece too about you know the the kinds of things that we're really trying to chase down in spelling mm. you know the so so I'm sort of pulling out so Di, if there's one um, could you start us off by talking a little bit about you know lots of um, people will talk to me you know about high frequency words what are we doing right. with yep. teaching um, High frequency words, although I find sometimes it's only on the reading side that people think about yeah, high frequency which is a shame words. Because mm. you know, if you learn to read it and spell it at the same time, then one will help the other. Yes. You know, as mm. a reader, I'll I'll sort of know how to say the word, and as a writer, I'll know how to spell it. Yes. Um, and because I know how to spell it, I'll recognise it in my reading and therefore know how to say it, you know. So yes, yeah. I don't understand why you wouldn't do it together because no. learning about what it looks like and how to say it help each other so much because English is not just phonetic. Mm. I can't just sound out words. I've got to know a lot more about how words work and that will help me as a reader and a speller. Yes. So I would never do that, but I do. But I do also say to the kids things like, again, I've noticed in your writing that a lot of you are trying to spell some words that you use a lot. Mm. So that would be sensible if we actually knew how to spell them automatically. If they just yes. came off our pencil or pen without me meaning to think about it because I use them so often. Well, I wonder what those words are. And I have found, if I've been doing, you know, lots of good shared reading with, with kids, even in their first year at school, 
after a few weeks, if I say, what are the words you've noticed that these writers are using a lot? Mm. And they'll tell me. Mm. So I don't need to say to them, oh, this is a, this is a word we all need to learn and it's in the colour mm. yellow box yeah. or something, yeah. uh, which is, there's no need to group the words according to colours. Whoever came up with that, I just don't understand where they got it from. No. It's, mm. we, what are these writers doing? Well, we're also writers. So those words would be very handy for us. And I can say to them, you know, if you notice, you're using those words much more than any others. It would just make sense for you to know how to not even think about them when you're writing. Yes. So they tell me. Mm. We might start making a list of those words. Um, they're high frequency because they're used a lot yes. in writing. Yes. So it'll be helpful for us to know how to read them and write mm. them. Mm. Well, then you have to think about how will we do this. You know, and I mean, for example, said is a very common word if kids are, are writing about he said and she said or whatever. So, well, let's look at that word. And is there anything that surprises you about it? What What don't you notice? You know, what do you notice that's really mm. interesting or surprising about? It? Oh, well, I hear an et in the middle of the word, but it's an AI. Wow, would well, that? You know, you all mm. seem to know it had an S at the beginning and a D at the end when I looked at your writing, but it was that middle bit mm. that you you weren't sure about um, mm. or you didn't get right. So that's obviously when we're looking at the word, that's what we need to notice. Mm. It's almost like that look, say, spell it, cover, write, check, which is yes. just a technique, mm. nothing more than a technique for how to automatically remember a word. Mm. I think I'd, I'd be writing that now as notice, not look. Mm. Because I don't mm. think the kids yes. understand what look means in that. It means take a photo, notice what surprises you, what's unusual. And that might be different for you and for me. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you may, in the word people, you may be in, surprised by the end of it was L E instead of E L. But I might be surprised by the fact that there's an O in the middle of it. And yes. I didn't hear that when I said the word. So let's talk about the word and really notice it. And then, you know, both remembering what it looks like. Plus, of course, if it's a word like um, hop, I could just think about, you know, the sounds I hear in the word. Mm. But frankly, I know uh, that op will always be op. But the, and O is not always op. But those, what we all not call, you know, in teaching and linguists as rhymes, R-I-M-E-S, yes. there are 37 of them, like op, that are very regular. Yes. That, again, help us read and write lots of words. So, wow, there's a good grouping strategy too. So mm. a high-frequency word might be went. Yep. Yes. Well, that's is a, the rhyme. You know, the word, mm. ent. And but it is and always an et, is it? No, but no. in ent, it is. Yes. And so now we know went. What other words will that help us to read and write? And you know, if we just ask a good question like that, I've yeah. had five year olds tell me words like sentence. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mm. You know, yeah. hear me. I'm just this dumb teacher who would have thought went, <laughs> sent, bent, etc. And this five year old says sentence. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. it helps you with sentence. Yeah. Yes, you know. So, yeah. just going back, um, just going back a step, uh, Di, um, shared reading. Uh, we talk it now a, a little bit about um, enlarged text, so where all eyes are on the text, and you're working yes. on that together, um, and using big books to help with that, or a whiteboard, or you know, um, yep, um, a song on a chart, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. on on a whiteboard that's yeah. enlarged. Yep. I was just clarifying that for for, for the listeners. Yes, just to, yes, it is really important because yeah. it does mean all eyes on the one text. Yep. And we're all looking at it and all reading it together. Yeah. Yep. It's not each having a copy. Right. And look, that's that term came from Don Holdway doing all that research in the nineteen sixties. Yep. Again, you go back to the researchers and find out yes. about how do you do that properly yep. Uh, yep. so that the research they did will actually transfer to my teaching because I'm I'm going about the right way. But, you know, it's fascinating, isn't it, that in shared reading the kids can see the word, mm. say the word, yes. and hear you say the word. 
Yes. That mm. is so useful for reading and writing, isn't it? Yes. yes. And yeah. particularly for children whose lang- first language is not English, yeah. hearing it and hearing someone say it as well as looking at it and then yes. saying it mm. help in so many ways. There so are, there are huge, we should never um, poo-poo any of those strategies no, because, no. you know, using all strategies – are so important in reading and writing, there not are, just focusing on one. There are huge numbers of those big books in libraries all across Australia, so teachers, go get them. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, they're not meant to be in libraries. No, they're meant to be in classrooms. And they're often put in libraries in mm. alphabetical order by their title. But, you know, if it's supposed to be something my five-year-olds can all read with me once I've read it a couple of times, why isn't it in my classroom? It, it's because we want to go back to it over and over again. Especially, we can go back and study all of the 44 sounds from those words that they already know. You know, you have to know how to say a word before you can hear what sounds are in it. So if we can return to the material we're reading often, like those shared reading books, it doesn't belong in the library. They belong in the classrooms Mm. where they're appropriate to use for, you know, the, the, the children in my classroom. Yep. Yes, yep. and to, there for them to go and find words and reread often. Yep. Don't have any of them in the library. Every school no. I've worked in, we've had to go and get them out of the library and get them into classrooms. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, so, so what, what the high frequency words, yeah. Sharon? To come yes. back to that, yes. Um, we are become very aware. I mean, the kids are noticing what are the ones we should learn because we're using a lot as readers and writers, yes. and how will we go about learning them? And you know, and that can vary from word to word. Some of them we might use a memory aid. You know, kids will come up with things like friend. Oh, how will I remember that? You know, well, oh, well, Friday is the end of the week. A child told me mm. that. You know. So they come up with really fantastic ideas. And we still all use memory aids to help us with some words, don't we? Yes. So of course I want them to know how to use that as a strategy. Yes. Um, I want them to think about when they know that word, what other words do they know? Because if we just thought about each word as a separate entity, that would be so unhelpful. I actually had a Mm. university student who didn't know that because she'd moved around from school to school didn't know if she knew how to spell technique, it would help her to spell oblique, you know? Mm, mm, um, yes. We can start that with, but, you know, if you learn hat, you don't just know mat, sat, rat. If I know hat, I also know hats. Mm. If I know, you know, uh, run, I can also, that will help me with running. If I know yes. play, that will help me with playing, played, playful, playfully, etc. And we want to keep building up that morphemic aspect of the English language all the time because it is both, you know, morphemic and phonetic, isn't it? That yes. Yep. Meaning base determines the spelling in so many of our words or that all come from other languages. That's why they are pronounced in different ways. So we can't just use that. Mm. But we will learn how to use that strategy, of course, because... Uh, hearing the sounds in a word. If you watch little kids writing and they'll be really trying to listen for the sounds in a word. So, of course, I want to help them that if they hear a cut sound, I want us to explore what are the possible ways that cut sound could be spelt. Mm. Um, I can't tell them a lie and say, C says cut. You know, there are kids in my classroom who would be very confused by that because Mm. that's, you know, that's not what's happening in their name. So we must always be truthful about the language, but let's go and find out. And then we can even do things like, well, if when we make a list of all the words with a k sound, uh, it will be at the beginning and the middle and the end, not only at the beginning, mm. but which ones do you notice are the most common? You know, is CK common? Do you ever find CK at the beginning of the word? So we're really getting them to explore that very deeply rather than giving them a simple statement that's even untrue. Yes. And boy, you know, you can't stop them then. They just will drive you up the wall probably for the rest of the day saying, there's another one and there's another one and Mm. you just said. Mm. 
Um, so, so you're getting I'm, them I'm inviting them to be really very good learners too. They're, they're being yes. explorers and investigators, aren't they? Um, Absolutely. Yes. And as I say, you just can't stop them. Yep. Um, but, you know, and, and then how can you use that in your reading and writing that will help you? If you try a word that doesn't look right, still we will rewrite it another way as an adult even, won't we? Mm. And do you know what? We can do that because we've seen that word somewhere and we can recall what it looks like. But if my reading is from books that only have very limited vocabulary or limited types of words, my recall of lots of words is not going to be very good, is it? No, no. So, you know, the richness of, of, um, of what they're reading and writing is very important as part of that. Yes. It's, not, it's cruel to limit them. Yes, yep. really, almost jail worthy, in my terms. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but I, those those high frequency words. But knowing when you know a word, what other words do you know? I don't want to limit them to just say, "Well, we've got to learn those one hundred most no. commonly used words or something." No, and that... I want to show them how to do it well if they want to learn a word, so that for the rest of their lives they will know how to learn any word. Mm and know that if they know that word, how will it will help them with lots of other words and how will that help them with their reading and writing? Yes. That's yep. the follow-through that's important, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So some key things that we're really opening up for our students there is really about what do we notice so that, yes. we're, so that we're not coming in with the rule about this or this will always be, but rather that invitational approach of what do we notice – and, and coming up with the rules or generalizations, generalizations, because a rule has to be fixed in order to be called a rule. Mm. Uh, but what do we notice and how would you express that? Yes. You know, I've had kids say things like, well, you know, if love ends with an E, but before I add the ED, then the, the E gets divorced from love <laughs> and it marries ED. <laughs> you know, I would never have thought of yeah, expressing it that way. But if that's what meaning is meaningful to that student, that's yes. the important thing, not my mm. wording. Yes. Especially because I have found a lot of even teachers don't know the real information about what you do, like if you're doubling a consonant before you add something. Yes. You know, and, and yeah. I put these questions to them. Well, uh, why would you put uh, double the T in forgetting, but you don't in editing? Mm. Oh. Mm. And so we've got need to go back and revise what we thought we, we knew. Yes. And I had kids, you know, six months later, it's come back and say, hey, I've noticed a different word where that doesn't apply. So we'll also have to say, except for, you know, blah, blah. Mm. And, mm. Um, you know, so you open up that inquiring mind yes. that you talked about, Phil, and... Mm. It's so important for, for them to learn in so many ways and apply to everything. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I think that's – so what we notice, and if we know this, then we would also know – Yep. This mm. are it leads on to good, further learning. In- yeah, good questions for us to – or prompts to use rather yep. than jumping in with the, well, it's this. With or our sta- yes. or the statement from someone else's program. You know, yes. that I have found 90% of the time they'll have something wrong in them. Mm. You know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't rely on somebody who, even if I don't know as a teacher, if we explore it properly with the kids, we yes. will all find out the truth about yes. the way these prefixes, mm. suffixes, et cetera, yes. work. Yes. But, um, and of course, as a, as a school, though, you know, when I do that, you know, with my five-year-olds or what am I helping them with first? You know, what's going to be most helpful when I look at what they're doing in their writing? Yeah. Then often it's the exploring of representation of sounds that I will yes. help them with. Yes. But I also want them to think about what words look like right from the start yes. because the sounds only won't help them. And, you know, that's fascinating to learn like I always have a dictionary of etymology with me mm-hmm. so that I can share that information with them yes. about why a word might be spelled the way it is because of what language it comes from. And, you know, its meaning is determining its spelling and I can look at other words with the same meaning and therefore they have the same spelling. 
all of this is interesting and true. Yes. So, and you know, to me that's so important. Whatever I want the kids to learn about, I want it to, not to be someone else's words that are wrong. Yes, yes because um, I was, uh, of, um, some sometimes we, um, well, I've done it too, where you get a list of words that are f- from a text and you, you know, the kids learn those words and they have sentences that they've got to work on, all that sort of thing. So... Um, what, how do you see that work, Di? What's your... It doesn't work. Well, you know, you do have to really think logically and by mm. trying things out. What does actually help you, for example, learn a word? You know, when we were kids at school, we were given a list of 20 words to learn for the week. Mm. Well, who came up with that magic number? And for yes. some kids, mm. that's really hard. The parents are doing all the work at home. Mm. We're not actually doing any teaching when you do that. You're just giving kids a job to do. But... If I thought about um, first start, which words would be most useful, and they are part of that decision making, and then they understand the purpose for it. But then what we do with them? You see, when I was again when I was at school, we were told to put them in alphabetical order, write them five times each, mm-hmm. and write them in a sentence. None of those things actually helped me learn the word. No. So that was a waste of time. If the goal was to automatically then know how to read and write that word. So th- you have to really think through what what actually works so that they will know that and could apply it to any word they wanted to learn. And, of course, if you're studying the way the language works, the more that the kids learn as they go, go on, uh, the more they'll be able to apply all of that knowledge as well to what mm. how might I learn this word and that word because it's not always going to be the same. Yeah. So, but, you know, so, you know mm. some of it is just, you know, uh, getting an erasable white word and write board and writing and erasing, writing, erasing, especially if the kids are already misspelling they, T-H-A-Y. How do you break that habit, you know, mm. if mm. they get to get mm. a new habit? So, you know, I'm, I, can, I know these things work because I've actually tried them with children mm. and I've seen so many things that don't work and... And I think, why do I want to go on doing that? Yeah. Because, yes, yeah. And if it's because I don't know what else to do, mm. that's reasonable for a teacher to say mm. that. You know, when you're, when you're learning to be a teacher, there's so many things to learn. Yeah. So, you know, start doing some professional reading and not just yeah. by one person who's only going to teach you one thing, no. but, you know, who's we can read a variety and learn a lot. Um, so we talk about you having... Know, I mean, yeah. I learned from something that I... I saw Misty write about the other day um, in an, an answer to an email online about some of these things don't work for a child whose first language is not English because their language structure doesn't have that. Yes. And, and I've, I've found that you've got to know about their language as well so that you can help them make connections yes. about what mm. they know about their language. Yeah. You know? yes. And yeah. sometimes their language will help with the English word really well because the, our words come from other languages. Yep. So it's not a deficit. They might actually know more than we do. Yes. So, but, um, so if you have a... Um... You know, it's, it's just tragic. I see kids, you know, like so I have so many parents will write to me and say, you know, my child is doing really badly at spelling. How can you help me? How do you know that? Well, they're not passing the spelling test. Mm-hmm. I still can't believe how many kids are made to learn some words that someone else has chosen for them, Mm. but they're not even using those words in their writing and they're not even learning good ways to learn those words. Mm. And, you know, children could choose four words of their own and from knowing those words, how many other words would that help them with? And their four words might actually turn out to be 50 words. Yes, yes. 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 So it's much more useful work to do anyway yes. and really helps them. And it's not horrible and stressful for yeah. the child and the parent. Mm. So, the uh, other thing I really, while I'm thinking about this, when this happens, a parent get or sometimes a teacher, I'm working with these kids and I don't know what to do, send me a sample of their writing. Yes. When I look mm. at that, the first thing I do is I look at, are they already spelling some words correctly? Mm. Yep. Yes. Okay. Which ones? 
are they spelling the high frequency words correctly? If not, they would be good ones to start with because they're used more often. Yes. I do have to help them to know how to do that, of course. Yeah. Um, but when I look at the words they're misspelling, what strategies are they using? Yes. And do you know I have not yet come across a child who is not using phonetic strategies? In mm. other words, they're listening to the sounds yes. and they're trying to write the words from that. Yes. Okay, yep. great. Do I then say, well, then this child must need more of that? Of course no. I don't. No. I have these examples in front of me, you know, that show. It happened with three boys last week. And I look at their writing and when they misspell a word, I can see the only strategy they've used is what sounds they hear. Yes. So am I just going to continue to only work on that? If I hear, see the child write opened, O-P-E-N-D, they've used what sounds they hear. Yes. What mm. do they actually need some help with? I uh, look to see, is that a common type mistake? Dropped, oh, D-R-O-P-D. This is something then we, and I wonder if other kids would find this really helpful if we work on that. But the first thing might even be that when they hear, like, it might be dropped and they might write D R O P T. Yep. Then they don't even realize that what the E D is all about. Yes. You know, a base, it has a meaning. It's a morphine means when it's at the, after, at the end of a verb. It means it happened in the past. So we need to discuss this so they understand why we're adding ED. Like we don't write loved is just take off the E and add a D. No, we yeah. don't learn that. We're adding an ED because that has a meaning. Yes. So can you see everything I'm talking about is to do with how the language actually works, works. how yeah. I can observe what they're doing. And no, I don't need to do a, all, lots more of that. Mm. I, and I see they can spell some words correctly. So this child's not hopeless. Yeah. They just haven't learned the other strategies yes. to use yet. Yeah. Or they're not, you know, they're reading, what they're being given to read is so um, limited in yeah. the words they're even seeing that they can't even remember what yeah. a word might look like. Yeah, so have or they're being told, you know, things like, you know, the vowel in the middle and the E at the end will make the vowel say its own name. Okay, what about done? Come, some, you know, they don't start saying oh, mm. and they're high frequency words for <laughs> heaven's sake. Yes. Why would we tell children something that's so unuseful, you know, not useful? It's so only I, because you don't know enough as a teacher. Yes. No teacher purposely tries to teach badly. No, 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 no that's right. So, so the so more we, we can, can help. The teachers, the more we will help the kids and the parents. Yes, yep. yes. You know, I want the children to know it so well. They'll go home and explain to their parents what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yes, yeah. Yep. So I really like your way of of when we look at a piece of writing that we can, and that's the place where we can learn the most about yes, what students absolutely. are doing, and that we can look at what they know. And what strategies? Yep. So we can not only we don't just have to look at, um, you know, the what they've misspelled, but then to look at that to go, what do they know? What strategies exactly. are they using? Yep. As you know, and so I like you know, and there are particular strategies. So there's visual strategies. There's you know the morphological strategies. Yes, exactly. And it, or, and it might be a memory aid, you know, yes. that they know this word from or, you know, they know it's like another word or it might be, you know, because of the on-step rhyme work. Yes. Now, I have a list of those things. So mm. if I was a beginning teacher and I wanted a list of those, and I can give you that for your website. Fabulous. Uh, things Thank that you. are of practical help to people. Mm. How, how do I analyze their writing for their spelling? Step one, step two, step three. Yes. What will I do about it? What will I look for to know what strategies they're using? Yes. I that think... will build up so much knowledge for mm. the teacher or the parent. Yes. And that I want the kids to know about mm. that then we're all cooking with gas, right? We're all <laughs> yes. on the way to doing really yes. good stuff. And it's a great way for students and teachers to be tracking 
you know, the learning. Oh, yes. Of, yes, you do. Do you know the first, one of the first things I do is even work out the percentage of words that are correctly spelt? Oh, nice. And it's often really surprising for a child yes. and a teacher to know, you know what, 80% of your words are spelt correctly. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm not that bad. No. And then when I look at the miscues, or if you like the mistakes, the errors, whatever yes. you want to call them, well, you've really only got one type of error mm-hmm. or you've got two types of yes. error. That you, okay, that's yeah. practically that. We can easily fix that up. Yes. Let's get on with it. Yep. Yes. Yes, and then, and then that wonderful link that you make to say that – and then when we are learning, so it's that type of error and then we're – we're introducing them to a new strategy for for working with that, mm. then that opens up a whole lot of doors for a whole lot of words, mm. not oh, just... exactly. Not just this a few. word. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. just uh, going to the structure of a... Say you've got a literacy block, uh, Di, and yeah. you know, part of that we've talked about having a reading workshop where you have a mini lesson mm-hmm. and they have lots of practice, at, uh, the strategy teaching them, and, and then a writing yep. workshop... Uh, where does the word work fit in within that structure? Is it- well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it fits in with both reading and writing. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm doing as part of the writing workshop, if I want to have a focus on spelling or grammar or punctuation, yeah. we're going to be looking at what they're doing, looking at their – and I'm going to say, I've noticed in your writing today, blah, blah, the number of you are doing this – so let's see what we can explore about the cut sound or the, you know, the suffix or the derivative or mm. the compound word or whatever. Yeah. And we'll we'll study that until we feel like we know, uh, understand it. Like the use of there, there and there or which and which. Well, you don't do that by telling them and then spending one week on it and think now they all know it. Mm. But if they figure it out and can say it in their own words, all about the generalizations with sounds, spell, spelling patterns. I want to come back and talk about that. You must let yes. me do that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> then I, uh, and then we can build up this knowledge and do it systemically across the school. But I, um, Sharon, bring me back to where I started this. Oh, where, oh. Phil, where oh, does sorry. it fit? Yeah. So, I want yeah. to do that during the writing workshop, right? Yeah. Because mm, yeah. what I've noticed in your writing. Yes. And of course my planning for the the week, the term, the year, mm. you know, is such that if I'm a, a you know, a year two teacher or a year four teacher, I know what I want to cover across uh, the year. Yes. So I might spend six weeks on learning about how to add the suffix E D. Because if we do that well it mm. applies to so many words because every time I write in past tense, yes. I'm using a lot of those words. Yeah. Every time I tell a story, right? Mm-hmm. And But when I know that, well, I wonder what happens when you're adding the suffix ing. Because we studied something so well, it actually happens faster for the next suffix. Yes. And so it's what do I want to learn across the year? So I do that planning. But now, Phil, I come back to my writing workshop time. Yep. I can't do, spend half an hour every day in writing workshop on spelling. But if I know across the year what I'm going to, to deal with, yep. but, and I know in the week what I might deal with. And I always think about are there some words to learn because of the writing we're doing at the moment? Yes. And what are they, and, you know? And then what What about the way the language works? I want to do something about that. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I have to do it every day or for a short period of time because I'm thinking across the year. Yeah. And then where am I going to find out about it? Well, let's go back to the books we can read, yes. either in shared reading or what we're individually reading, yeah. and see if we can find examples of words with that sound or that suffix. Yes, or, or that pattern. That, that how, you know, so many punctuation. How are these writers using dialogue? Mm. Let's go and find out from the mm. books we read. Mm. Yes. Yep. So and because I know they can read these books, for example, they can say those words so we can study those sounds. But if I ask them to go back and say, 
listen, read it and listen for words with a sound, they can't even read the book. Mm. They can't do that. Mm. So mm. it's good to go back to what they can read. Yes. My shared reading material will yeah. be very useful for that. What's already on our word wall might be very useful for that or yes. on charts we've written together. But this, what I want to make a point of with spelling patterns, you know, as a, as a reader, you're actually looking at words and you might see a word like house. Well, you actually have to recognise that when you see that O-U in that word, it's not necessarily always going to be pronounced the same way. Mm. You know, so I need to study really common spelling patterns as part of my spelling work, but I know how much they will also help them as readers. I came across a whole class of grade four kids who are having difficulty with all of those words that have O U A I E A A I G H, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. right. Yes. And I had realised that in the school, no one had ever studied those spelling patterns. Mm. And you know, even with those, S H T H C H are very common. A E A is really common in English words. Yes. So why not study that as a spelling pattern? and realise it could be E-A as in great, or yes. E-A as in dead, or E-A as in read. And we can find that out, you know, again, by going back to books we can read yeah. and then regrouping them and coming up with, well, is there one more common than another? Or Like, it's in ocean. Mm, mm, not, uh, it's an uh, in ocean, isn't it? Yes. The mm, E-A. Mm. Yeah. Well, but gee, is that common? No. So if I come into a word when I'm reading and I'm trying to work out what it is, what, is, what are some ideas I could have about that? Because it's not nece- – you see, if you've never heard the word before, even as an adult, we'll still mispronounce things, won't we? Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. yes. <laughs> Most definitely. It, yes. It's, you know, sometimes the things we expect kids to do, no wonder it doesn't make sense to them. They've never even heard or seen the word before. No. Another reason I love shared reading, they're seeing as well as hearing. Yes. 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 Yep. yes. So, I so I make sure in a school's sort of scope and sequence, it's, you know, when are they going to study spelling patterns and not just mm. sounds? Yes. Yep. Yes. No. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've got. Don't help um, me a lot as a writer. Yeah. So we've got um, your resources um, that we can put up sections on our website so that oh, teachers can absolutely anything that access you want. these things. I'll give because you so some of the th- everything I've talked about. I can yeah. give you a little article about that. We'll yeah. Yes. Teach. So that's what yes. we'll do. We'll get the things that you've been talking about and get them up. Yes. Because um, yep. I was just going to say, even the um, the spelling patterns. I love yep. I love the the resource you've got around that that mm. you know what out of the spelling patterns what are the most com- you know what yes. is the most common sound um, that we're going to hear with that but what are all mm. the examples mm. of those because yeah and, exactly and which ones well, ex- we don't need to know the examples though no no because the kids will find oh them. oh yes yes right? exactly yep. yes yep. and it might be you know, three months later and we're studying the ocean, that they say, hey, there's a word with E-A, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. You're right? Oh, well, we better go back and add that. That's another yes. column. And, of you course. Know, and, again, I don't need to fill the walls with charts. Several yeah. of them are on clips, you know, yes. so I can just yes. fold over and go back and the kids can say, hey, we've got another one to add to this. Yes, mm. yes. So it's just one, you know, a couple of bulldog clips with lots of charts hanging there. Yes. Because, you know, these resources we're building – and I want the kids to see how useful they are. Yes, you know, yeah. to, for yeah. them as readers and that's, writers. Yeah, that's for, right. their, for their real reading and their real writing, they've yes. got them yes. to use. Yep. And they're yep. involved yep. in the noticing, yep. and they're involved yep. in the collecting, yep. and they're yep. involved in accessing these as mm. resources. Then, to yep. sub- yeah, to exactly to be making sense of all of this. And, as, and yeah, Di, you've worked through to um, secondary school, haven't you, in spelling and? Um, oh. Yes, yeah. and you know, and of course, there it's interesting. I actually find that it's often more like the science teacher, for example, who may need to do most work on spelling because a are they you intend to you have so many more science words that have the derivatives in them, mm. and that the where the kids, you know, if I look at their science notebooks, I'll notice quite different kinds of words that are misspelled. 
than mm. I will if I was looking at uh, what they were writing in English. Mm. Yes. Mm. So it's important that I see what's going on, you know, across different subject areas. And as I say, the science words fascinate me for where we can learn about derivatives and how they affect English spelling. Um, but I find in a secondary school that there will be individual children that I probably need to do some teaching of. I, you know, if it's teaching to the whole class, then look, perhaps I am noticing that most of my kids in year seven still don't know how to add suffixes properly to words because they have never studied it properly at school, mm. or they don't know how to use apostrophes. Yes. Mm. Right? Yeah. For yeah. possession. That's what mm. I might still Common. do a whole mm. investigation mm. in my English class about that and think about how they can apply that to anything they're writing. What do they notice in the environment that's spelt wrongly because mm. people don't know about, about you know, how again, they work. they've been told mm. something rather than learned it. Yes. And so they yeah. get it all wrong. Every time there's an S at the end of a word, they think it must have an apostrophe. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. so that, that's common. You yeah. Know, yeah. But I don't I find at a secondary level it will be more those sorts of issues that I might yeah. Yeah. If I don't, again, it's a matter of what, I want, what am I noticing in the kids' writing. Yes, yeah. and I think that's and a big... that it will lead me to know what to do. It would be yeah. the last place where I would spend money on a program. Mind yes. you, see, I would not waste my money on a program in a school. There's not nearly no. enough money to buy books for children to read. Mm. Spelling is the cheapest thing to teach yeah. because all I need is some chart paper yes. and the books they are reading yes. already. yes. Yeah. And that we can learn everything that we need to learn about spelling. Oh, yeah. I love that. What a waste that. of money to go yes. and buy a program that's not going to transfer to the kids' writing. No, we thank you so much for your uh, uh, offer of the resources and we'll um, make My sure pleasure. we'll mm. go through those and make sure teachers get access get to those. Access and that, um, yes. Yep. Fantastic. Well, mm. your website is so good. So oh. if we can, you know, keep ha- helping teachers, great. Thanks, Di. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and, uh, Sharon, have you got a final um, question Ooh. towards the end on that t- on our topic? of <laughs> a, fi- a final question. How yeah. big a question do we want? <laughs> Anything to do with teaching spelling within... You be careful. I'll, I'll, I'll promise you I'll give you a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> teaching spelling for writing, Sharon. Yes. Well, I mean, I think the things that we've talked about, it, it is about those... You know, we often think spelling is about learning words, but is what strategies, what word learning strategies are we giving? I mm. think that's, mm. you know, something that, you know, is a big shift for us to think about. Yeah. You know, it's about we want students to, to learn words, but not just singular words. We want them to know the strategies how, of how, to, how that's going to help us yeah. Yeah, yeah. learn yeah. more and words also, and the language. to make sure kids get to read each other's writing so that there's a purpose. Mm. Yes. Mm. So it's not just a teacher reading their writing, but they, you know, build in a little bit of time for kids to read each other's writing at the end yeah. of the writing workshop. Yes. So they, they can say, you know, and, and you can have some specific days where you can say, um, see what you notice about everybody's spelling, you know, is, mm. is, it, is it easy for you to read their writing? That's great. Um, yeah. How would you, yeah. what, what things do you notice about what we might need to learn, learn about as a class? Yes. Mm. You yeah. know, if you're having trouble learning a word, are there any, is there anyone in this class who can help you? You know, or it, it's, it's such an easy thing to make community-based. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yes. one, of, one of our um, timeless teas, we talk about being together and, Learn. We are yep. le- learners together, and uh, such an important aspect, isn't it? To you're learning Absolutely. as a commu- as a community. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yep. And kids become very excited about spelling when it's done that way. Yes, yes, yep. yes. They really do. because yep. they're not only seeing a reason for it, but they are part of the. Mm. Um, well, they <laughs> they can engage in the learning rather than yep. it just being. Mm. And they go uh, home to and, and as a family, they'll be saying, we've got to find some more words with EA mm-hmm. in them or yes. with a particular sound in them or, you know, whatever. And and they just, you can have a lot of fun as a family doing yeah. that. Yes. Even. yes. I tell you what, I just, all the parents who come to me and complain about the kids having to learn 20 words <laughs> this week. Mm-hmm. And it's not even, you know, there isn't actually any way that they know how to help their kids learn no. those words. No. It's mm. just 
some sort of rote learning. Mm. It, it's tragic. Yes, mm. and the connection, of course, as you've reminded us all, you know, the connection is because we need it for our writing. Yeah, <laughs> And the exactly. connection that the more words we hear and see – Mm. And that you yeah. know, rich and extensive vocabulary, you know, that we are building through what we read and what we read together. So, and of yeah. course, mm. our read alouds. If mm. if someone's still oh, reading yes. to me at home I mean, or at school, yeah. that all of those things are building that interest and intrigue and wonder about words. So that yeah. we've got a real reason I to go exploring those kids it. To be all like Tom coming to visit with no clothes in his bag, but a bag full of books. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've got a lot of motivated teachers and leaders out there who are listening to this podcast and are, are yearning for ways to get, you know, make this better. So um, today has been fantastic I know. for teachers that. Teachers so. work so hard. Yeah. Yeah. They do. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's not fair if they don't know more. And look, I'm lucky. I was asked to write a book in 1983 mm. about spelling. So I've been researching it since then. And, mm. you know, mm. I, I, thank goodness it's not the only thing I learn a lot about. <laughs> but it's, at least I have always kept up a specific interest since then. So by yes. the time we wrote yeah. the third book, and we knew what teachers wanted to know about. So yes. Yes. that's what we wrote about. I would love to. Love, love so, to yeah. Sorry, I was just going yeah. to say, and that's what's so real. You know, you are writing this for teachers. Mm. It has, like, um, you know, there's lots of um, practical things that will come up in, um, you know, that the resources that we put up for teachers about, yeah. you know, that it that it's coming out of the reading and writing experiences. This isn't falling outside of this as another add-on of like, mm. where do I fit this in? Mm. This yep. is all... Within your reading and writing. It, it's connected. It has meaning. Yep. It has purpose. And every time I we have this, con- you know, have any conversations or I hear you speak about spelling, di- I always still have another thing to take away with me. Yeah. You know, it's like mm. my big thing today is definitely about the having children sharing their writing with each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and reading it to each other and there's mm. the purpose, you know. Yeah, sometimes no, it's we'll get- different. Not reading it to each other for this no, purpose. No, sorry. It's it's, they've, got, they've got to read. They've got their. You know, my mate has to read my writing yes. and be saying, I can't work this yes. out. What do you mean here? Because yes. that tells me, oh, I should have done some proofreading or I should have found some sort of resource to figure out how to spell that word. Mm. Yes. Uh, because someone's going to read it. Yes. yes. You know, and I don't mean that they have to fix up every word. That should never, no, you know, no. it, but you go back and you, in the first place, you do your best. And because then you won't have so much to fix up. Yes. And for teachers yeah. to not make kids fix up. Pages and pages mm. in one mm. year. How yeah. dreadful. Yes. But, you know, even if you just give your mate a paragraph to read and they can give you some feedback. Mm. And it's not that the, the content isn't important, mm. but today we're just going to think about the spelling and how we can help each other with that. Yes. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. or the punctuation or the yeah. grammar or the, the content, whatever. Yes. You know, yes, so, whatever's been the focus for yeah. that. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So we've touched yeah. on this aspect today, but we'd love to have you back another time, Di, to talk about another aspect of literacy because I. You've just sure, got such... anything I can do yeah. to help. Yeah. Yes, I know. You are so generous. You've been generous across the world with yeah. your, yep. um, you know, sharing. Well, look, we all are as teachers because yes. we just know there are kids, uh, we can make a difference to their lives. Yes. It's Whatever a... we do, we are making a difference to their yes. lives. Yes. So we have to be careful not to lead them up the garden path mm. and to let mm. their learning be very narrow. Yes. But so unfair. Yeah. And make it really rich learning. Yeah, and so you've com- really yeah. added to our repertoire yeah. today, yeah. you know, and that's what we, you know, as teachers, no matter, you know, where we are in our teaching career, we are always being confronted with, with you know, we, we're, we've got Something students in learn. front of us. Yes, yeah. and we're going, oh, yeah. what, this, I don't have yet what I, you know, what might be the right thing mm. for this child. So what can I explore? Yeah. What can I add to well, what well, we're the, I we're, try? We're the professional. We're making these professional choices and um, we're trying yes. to get the best information we can out there to make those choices. Yes. And looking, yes. At, our, looking at our learners and just trying mm. to cater for all, each one of them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, you know, sometimes teachers are in a school where 
um, administration might tell them they have to do this or they have to do that, and it's mm. very hard for them. Mm. And I think the more that they know, the more they might be able to have a good discussion about yes. what's going on and, in the school and, and get them to a committee you know, that uh, influences those uh, decisions. You know, so yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, Di, yeah. Um, can we finish off with asking you some um, rapid fire questions just for a bit of fun? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What was your favourite book as a child and why? Well, you know, think, you know, if you figured out how old I am, in my <laughs> days at, at primary school, for example, there were no picture books other uh, than the golden books. Uh, yeah. And uh, the novels were the classics like Gulliver's Travels, yes. and, mm. you know, so forth, Black Beauty. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, some of them are still fantastic, yes. but uh, it's interesting to think. I can actually still remember when Little Black Sambo was published when I was uh-huh. in about grade t- five or something. Yes. Um, and and that, that was one of the first picture books we had. It's interesting, isn't oh, it? Oh, well. But anyway, I, when I was in grade one, I loved Blinky Bill. Oh. And it was a, a thick book about this koala. It's a fabulous Australian yes. book. Yes, yes. And I loved that. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and a, and a big text, a very... Yeah, big, thick book. <laughs> yes. Mm. Well, my grandmother um, looked after me when mum went to work before I went to school mm. and we used to read the newspaper together. So um, mm. even when there weren't picture books, someone was still reading to me and I went to school already knowing how to read. Imagine if I'd gone wow. to school and someone had given me a terrible, boring book <laughs> to read. Yes, oh we would construct. But so there we were trying to read, I don't know, God, well, we had the school reader, yes. which had fabulous, rich literature in it. Absolutely right, yeah. fabulous. Mm, mm. We learned loads of poetry. Yes, mm. yes. Wonderful. Oh, and you're we a have, big we advocate have, for poetry, that's for sure. Yeah, we've got a podcast yeah. on poetry coming up, which will be great. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 Um, what's your most interesting school story? I'm, I mean, it's probably hard to pick it because you've had such experience in so yeah, so many. many different schools. Um, yeah. And with, I mean, it could be with a, yeah. With a teacher, I don't know. Or, it's it's mm. really hard for me to say. I think that. Um, oh, well, look, you know, I've been working a lot with a, a fabulous school near where I live, Mornington Park Primary School, and uh, you know they have a lot of kids who have not had the easiest start in life. Um, and I just love the fact that you can go there now, and every, you know they've had such wealth of great literature to read, like the. The prep teachers mm. all have multiple copies of of all of you know, like the Green Sheep and oh, um, yes. the June Donaldson books and mm. the Pat Hutchins and all yes. of those books that they can read. Like they have to feel, I am a reader. Yes. And when the teacher reads these books over and over, I know we know they're not actually reading yet, but the fact that they pick up a book. Yes. And know where to turn the page, and know yes. that there are words and all that sort of stuff. But they say, "I am a reader." Yes, I just love seeing those prep mm. kids, foundation kids, read in inverted brackets, if you like. Yes. But then they they start to remember because those high frequency words are in everything yes. that they're, yes. they're seeing, yeah. and they start to pick up on those. They start to actually understand that when you say this word, you hear these sounds, mm. and when you hear these sounds, then you see these letters. So, I mean, many of them start to figure out a lot about sound-symbol relationships mm. um, because they're trying to read and they feel so positive yes. about reading. And, and these actually, kids at sorry. this school, because of the rich literature in every classroom, mm. have left the rest of the state for dead mm. in their improvement in reading. Yeah. So that's my type of good school story. Oh. It's when you see, you know, this is changing their lives. This is what we do as teachers. We can change their lives. Yes. 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 I just love it. Oh. In New York, I had a kid like that, you know, living in the shelter for the homeless. Mm-hmm. And in preps, you know, he learned to read like the same sort of thing. I got the teachers to read to the kids every day and whatever. Yes. and. When the principal came in and asked him, "What have you learned this year?" He did a he did a cartwheel and said, <laughs> "I learned to read." Oh, you know, 
that's what we want. That's what we want. That's it? what we're chasing yeah. down, aren't we? What's, yeah. What's the best question you love to ask teachers? When it comes to the spelling, I say, you know, uh, ask your. Well, I want. I'm asking you to ask your kids. Why do you think we we need to learn how to spell? Yes. Yeah. So it's sort of like I'm asking them, in other words, what 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 ideas are you giving your kids about what spelling's for? Yeah. Mm. And Joe, let's go into your classroom and find out the answer to that question. Because that can be and the big game changer. Yeah. That's yeah, right. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and that's- so I'm sorry. It's it's. I mean, I'm very, I'm very careful about what I ask teachers. I don't want to offend them. No, no. But no. if they know me well enough, and I'll say, "Look, I'm only here today. So do you, you know, do you want me to talk about such and such from yeah, what yeah. I see on your classroom do, wall? Or do you want a hard, um, hard question, or yeah. do you want a soft question? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and you've kind of answered the best question you love to ask students. Um, that's, yeah. yeah. Mm. When it, only when it comes to spelling. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's not all that matters, of course. No. And your, no. your f- I'll tell you something that makes a difference mm. to what you give them to write with. Like this teacher I'm working with, mm. um, who's one of the coaches in Victoria, you know, they're paying extra money for helping the kids who struggled because From of COVID. COVID. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And my, I mean, my first question to the Minister for Education then was, who's going to train them? Yes. Mm. The teachers, right? Yes. Because that's a lot of money. Do they really all know the best way to help each child? Yes. Anyway, these I, was the typical, you know, show me their writing. Mm. They're in grade four and they're writing with pencils. Oh. School pencils are cheap yeah. and the lead yes. in them is dreadful. Yes. It is very difficult to write neatly. Mm. Yes. I said, why don't you buy them each, you know, how we go to office works or wherever and we make sure we buy a pen that's very fluid. Yes. Why don't you give them a, a really nice pen to write with each and see what happens? Mm. Those boys were yeah. amazed at how much their writing improved. Oh, the oh principal God. couldn't believe the change. Yes. And, of course, if they're writing beautifully, everybody gets a very different impression of their spelling, let me tell you. Yes. And they actually went back and negotiated with the teacher mm. about how they, why they would be allowed to use pens all the time instead of pencils. Oh, That's wow. a good school story, isn't it's it? Great it's a great story. story. Brilliant. So I do want you all out there to think about the implements that kids are being given to write with because yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah. Yes. I learned that by giving children I was working with my my pen to mm. write with and yes. I thought, oh, wow, look what they can the do difference. if they've got something that's fluid. Yes. And yeah. finally, and you might have answered this in some of the other ones. <laughs> might have, I think. Your, your, best, your, <laughs> best, your best tip for thriving in the teaching of literacy for teachers out there. Oh. I would say read children's books. Mm, It will be a very enjoyable experience for you and you will get to know a lot about great books. There's so many of them. And it is is really sad. Like Mem actually spoke about, we don't have enough librarians in our schools anymore. Mm, And I'm lucky I did a librarian course and Mm. have kept up with children's literature. Most schools have to ask me for lists of good books to buy. Yes. So just, you know, get into a good bookshop every week somehow if you can or online or whatever. Try and find, go to this local library, find some good books to read. So Mm. now I give friends' kids books to read and they want to ring me up and talk to me about the books, Mm. you know. Mm. So Mm. if I didn't know what book to give them to read that they would love, I wouldn't be getting nearly as far with them. And, and some, yeah. of our, some of our podcasts are, are, have been and are going to be on uh, recommended books to read. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's mm. another way so to do building, it. building, yes, yeah. yes. But, and there yeah. are some good myths. Like I know that Foundation for Literacy Learning website is yes. put, starting to put yes. a lot of good lists of books up. You will on yours, of course. Mm. Yes. Uh, mm. Because, again, you know, I mean, a lot of teachers would perhaps not even be able to get close to a good bookshop mm. where they're teaching. So Cause when that liter- don't worry about looking for resources that other people can tell you about. Because we've been talking about in other podcasts uh, making literature a central part of your teaching. It's just so rich for everything you do, oh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yes. Every subject area has yeah. good yeah. stuff to read. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
So thank you so much. And you know, there's mm. a lot of free stuff online these days too. All the Beatrix Potter books you can get as free audibles. Oh, my goodness. Oh, true. Yeah, there's all those, yeah. there's all those tips out there, the things yes. that you can yeah. already get. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And I actually, there's a lot of books that are now, um, you know, during COVID times, a lot of teachers have um, uh, put up onto YouTube. Books. Oh, yeah, well, YouTube's got um, all the Dr. Zeus books, mm. of course, some and people are saying some of them are no good anymore. Yeah. God, it's incredible. Yes. But anyway, yeah. um, and Sharon, lots of great. I think lots, lots of the Julie Donaldson picture books are on YouTube. Yes, um, and there's uh, lots of lots of great Audible books. Yes, um, so many yes. terrific resources now. Even if you've got no money. Yeah. Yes. So yes, Sharon, you exactly. were recommending uh, putting that YouTube book up, but. Then um, the teacher putting the sound down and yes. using their own voice on it. Um, yes. It's a, yes. It's a good great idea. idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can use it in so many ways. The kids mm. can read along with it. Yes. And then they can turn the, you know, their volume up and then they read it. Oh, or, yeah. You know, yes. They yep. can just listen to it. I mm. mean, yeah. how flexible. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. And, yeah. I was just going to say, and then I could go on with other things. Yeah, but, but I anyway, think yeah, we'll I finish. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you on so much. podcast. Thank you so much, Thank Donna. You. I'm sorry I yeah. talk. No, so no. Much. But no, no, not too much. Oh, we're so grateful, Di. You know, mm. we can – and, you know, this is um, the conversations that we want to have plenty of, you know, mm. that they can be yeah. – and that you can absolutely share this information. Mm. Um, and I'll just wrap up by the- saying thank you, everyone, uh, for listening today um, to our podcast and uh, please stay in touch with us through the, other, the different ways, through the website, through the Facebook group. Um, and uh, tune into our next podcast. And um, thank you very much, Di, and thank you, Sharon. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. Put on you all you great teachers out there. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thank you, everyone. So, okay, bye thanks for now. For okay, bye. thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to the podcast. To make sure you don't miss any literacy learning tips and insights, please subscribe to our show on your favourite podcast player. At Q Learning, our literacy specialists draw on over 30 years of teaching and international consulting experience to deliver world-class learning solutions. We equip, empower and support teachers to become their authentic selves. To find out about upcoming webinars and about how Q can help you and your school, visit qlearning.com.au. And you can get even more amazing teaching resources right now at teachific.com.au. Stay tuned.